anybody who is abreast and knows what's going on in the NBA uh, is well aware that the Brooklyn Nets fired head coach Jock Vaughn on Monday. There were no games being played. They were still in the all-star break. So it's one another one of those cases of how you get fired on your day off, right? <laughs> um, but, hey, look, and I don't I enjoy seeing, you know, brothers get fired, nothing like that. Um, I think he kind of had an uphill climb from when he got that job after they lose KD, Kyrie, um, and James earlier. But, look, the fact is, they are 21 and 33 right now before the All-Star break ends. Good for 11th. They do not have any franchise star currently on the roster. If you thought it was Ben Simmons, that era is long gone. We're not getting that Sixers Ben Simmons when he first started out. Mikel Bridges, very good player, not the guy. You got Cam Johnson. You got so many other. You got Cam Thomas. Good, good players, but are you going to really be able to build around them? And so with all that being said, the Nets have fired three head coaches in the last four years. They're on their fourth one right now with interim head coach Kevin Ollie. Dexter. Yes, sir. You cover the Knicks and Nets very closely. I know you're a Knicks guy, but hey, man, there's got to be accountability from up top. That's the thing, Chris. You you said it. Three coaches hired in eight years under Sean Marks. Possibly, and this is the thing. Do, do, I'm going to throw this to you guys before I say more. Do you guys believe, based on what you've seen from the Brooklyn Nets and what has transpired with them over the last eight years, that general manager Sean Marks should be allowed to hire another head coach without ever guys ever making at least the Eastern conference finals. Should he be allowed to hire another head coach? She is that, is that a real question? Because you know what? I'm going to quote another line from Friday. I'm going to quote another line from Friday. Cause I heard Chris talk about you getting fired on your day off. Right. Listen, Y'all ain't never got two things that match. Mm. Peanut butter, no jelly, <laughs> ham, no burger, <laughs> star players, no coach. You ain't never matched. <laughs> You ain't never matched. You had KD, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and then you had Steve Nash. Sir, mm -hmm. what is it like? This is, this is the decisions that he's making. Sean Marks been need to go. And I know that is very grammatically incorrect. That man been needed to go, okay? There's no way. There's no, to answer your question, Dexter. No. So you got, you're, going, you're going with a no. I'm inclined to agree. Now, from all that I hear, he's been really tight with owner Joe Sy. I don't know if Joe Sy is going to want to go into another direction this offseason, but I've heard that it could be open. It'll be interesting to see because they are at a crossroads right now. It didn't work out with all these coaches. It didn't work out with the Kyrie, KD, James Harden experiment as Tariq and Chris just brought up. It didn't happen with all that. There's been dysfunction around the team. The energy in the building is dead. Nobody's caring about Barclays games. If you want energy for a basketball game at Barclays Center, you better go see the Liberty because that's the only energy you're getting right now. Sorry, Nets fans, but y'all know it's true. This is a really dire situation. And Chris, you talked about the roster. You talked about the players. You talked about the fact about they don't have a star to build around. From what I've been told, the way they're looking at this is they don't want to build around Mikel Bridges, who I think is a really good player, very good player, probably best if he's your third option. I think we all could agree on that. They want to build with Mikel Bridges, and that's the message that they've been putting out there. Now, how are they going to do that? The reason it's a problem, they don't control much of their first-round picks for the next right. couple of years. That's another issue in terms of rebuilding. So what are they at a crossroads now is this is really on Joe Sy. Are you going to let Sean Marks hire another coach? Because if you really look at the failings of the Brooklyn Nets, it's actually been in the coaching hires, right? You yep. can sit here and talk about the KD, Kyrie stuff, and we all know Kyrie didn't want to get the jab, and he didn't want to do it. Then James Harden didn't like that and got out of there. But look at the coaches they've hired. Steve Nash was not a good coach, okay? He was not a good coach, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't handle the team. They actually had a good coach that turned things around there, and Kenny Atkinson, what did they do? They let him go. And a lot yep. of what I had heard is because Kyrie Irving didn't want him there. Okay? So you've made these choices based on the players that you've brought in. 
And at the center of it and the root of all of it, and Chris brought up the word accountability, the accountability, all the coaches have been held accountable and have been right. fired. But there's been no accountability for Sean Marks. And the question for me going forward is, when is that going to come? I think the time is now. Now, do I think they're going to let Sean Marks go before the season ends? No. I think if something happens, it's going to happen at the end of the season, preferably before the draft. Because this Nets team, as they're currently constructed, guys, they're going nowhere. That's kind of what Chris was alluding to. He's like, well, what's the plan? And that's the thing I haven't got an answer to. What is the plan with the Brooklyn Nets? They clearly want to rebuild. I think they're going to try to move off of Ben Simmons' contract next year. But the bigger question, guys, is who is leading that plan and vision? Because if we're saying that Sean Marks has to be the one that's held accountable, well, you're going to let him hire another coach? His fourth in eight years, which will be going on the ninth season where he hasn't made the Eastern Conference Finals? Who Has anybody seen anybody in the league as a GM ever get the chance to do that? To hire four coaches in eight years and never make an Eastern Conference Finals? That doesn't happen. If that happens... I really got to question what the Nets are doing because right now they look lost. They look lost in the wilderness. They look lost in the wilderness right now. They haven't put two things together like T said. There's no accountability. And I'm sorry, Joe Sy, it's on you now because you have to hold this accountable. You have to make sure that whether it's – if Sean Marks is going to be there, you're going to let him pick another coach. Look, I'm going to come out and say it. Ain't no black GM getting that many chances. We know that. That's not happening. Right. That, that's not happening. Right. Black or white. It's or – head coaches like that's crazy but you know what Derek I mean Derek damn damn it Dexter I, okay. um, I have no idea where Derek even came from like that's wild <laughs> um <laughs> like what um but I do have a question for you because it doesn't it obviously is no surprise that this move would come after being blown out by 50 points by the Celtics right like that in itself is is concerning but I feel like if it were not for that if it were not for the obvious, right? Because mm. when you look at when you look at Vaughn's overall record, he's 64 and 65. So he's literally only one game under 500. And even though this team isn't the worst team in the league, it has often felt like y'all gotta be at the bottom of the barrel, right? Like it's like it's often felt that way, even though numbers don't suggest that is that way. But I'm curious if you believe, just based off what you've seen and what you've covered, if you thought that this was something that would have happened with him being let go in the middle of the season, if it had not been for them being destroyed by Boston by 50 points? I think that you bring up a great point there, T. And if, yeah, so my answer in the short would be, I think the Boston 50-point loss was a factor. And it wasn't just a factor in terms of the fact that it got blown out by 50. But if you saw some of the comments after the game from Mikel Bridges uh, about that, where you were like, ooh, this is damning. What and I found this out yesterday. I spoke with Brian Lewis, my colleague at the New York Post. After that game, the 50-point loss, they had – he had Kevin Ollie, Jacques Vaughn is he I'm referring to, had Kevin Ollie give a speech to the players to sort of rile them up. And I think that was a writing on the wall for him there because the players responded to Kevin Ollie and played well the next game in Orlando. So – that wasn't good for him there. To you, I mean, understand this happens sometimes with coaching. You go to assistant coach, you want to give a different voice. That happens. But T, there's, to me, there's no doubt that the 50-point game loss had a factor in it. But I'm going to go back another month because you know what I really think did Jock Vaughn in? When you look back to that game in December where he rested, and he, I'm yep. saying he lightly. That's it. Lightly. Because that was an organizational decision. That was not yeah. Jacques Vaughn making that decision. I want to be very clear about that. That was management saying, rest these players. The players didn't rock with that. The Nets have tailspinned ever since that time. I'd asked some people around the team that covered them at the time and said, hey, do you think that's a factor? And the first people were saying, no, no, I, I, don't, I don't think so. But, no, that was definitely a factor in that. The team was disjointed. They were never together. And I think once you saw what happened with the 50-point loss in Boston, the Boston Massacre there, it was a wrap. It, the, the writing was on the wall. So, yes, Tariq, I think that was definitely a factor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't right, Dexter. You are not right for that, man. But that's true. It's true. It's, it's what true. it was. <laughs> it was just a whole lot of dysfunction there. Dysfunction. Uh, do you, at this point, I feel I personally feel at this point part of the reason that they continue to get in this situation is because I don't think that they are thoroughly researching and thoroughly looking to pick a head coach that truly fits what they are looking to build um, in Brooklyn. And I don't know if that person exists right now. Like, I think that this is 
um, you know, you might want to let Kevin Ali rock out a little bit because this season is probably a dead season anyway. Like, it's no point in trying to make magic or try to find a postseason spot in this season. At least I don't believe so. But um, there certainly does need to be a certain amount of time dedicated to a true coaching search and not just getting a guy to fill a role, not just promoting the next guy just because you feel like you want to promote him. Um, and I'm not opposed to promoting Kevin Ali. I'm just simply saying if he's the right guy, then make that decision. Don't just do it for the sake of doing it, right? And and I think that's just kind of where I am with I'm interested in seeing how this coaching search will go. Um, if Sean Marks is going to be the guy, if it's not, it's going to be somebody else. But I'm, I'm very interested in seeing how this coaching search is going to go when I look at the available coaches um, who are out there right now. Because we ain't going to ask nobody in Milwaukee how that went. But we ain't going there. Lord, you know, on that, hey, look, man, you you about to go down some dangerous, dangerous territory, T. 